Ephesians 6, commencing at verse 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armour of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armour of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled round your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Pray also for me that whenever I open my mouth, words may be given me so that I will be fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly, as I should. Amen. You might want to turn back to that Bible reading that Wynne brought to us uh, before the offering. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 20. Again, if you're using one of our um, core Bibles, you'll find that on page 1177. And this is the... uh, the reading that we're going to focus on this evening over the next few minutes uh, as we think about what God has to say to us in the context of Basingstoke's cause story. Before we open God's word, let's just pray together. Father God, we recognise that as an army, as the Salvation Army, we are in a battle we're in a battle across the world, and we're in, the ba- in a battle in our community here in Basingstoke. So we ask that you will help us to ready ourselves for the battle that we face in the coming week, and uh, help us to be ready to fight on your behalf, to uh, fight the sin and the wrong uh, and the injustice that we see in our world, and to bring the good news that replaces all of that the good news of your gospel. And we pray these prayers in your name. Amen. Basingstoke, a straggling, ill-built town, a market town mainly dependent on its corn and malt trades, but suffering from the decline in agriculture across the country. A town beginning to find new life as a manufacturing centre. A town of around 7,000 people with 50 pubs and beer houses and four breweries. On Sunday the 19th of September 1880, war was declared on this straggling, ill-built town. Two hallelujah lassies and a detachment of the Salvation Army opened fire on sin and Satan at the factory in Brook Street. The war cry reported the result. You'll have heard this report before, no doubt. On Sunday, Captain Green and her Lieutenant Happy Martha opened fire in Basingstoke. The results so far have been glorious victories. Captain Green, reporting the account of the battle, says the Almighty came down upon us and the people here did not know what to make of us. But when they heard us, 
Some of the old people who'd known a bit of the joys of the kingdom began to sing, it's the old time religion. The Salvation Factory proved too small to hold people and Happy Martha held a meeting outside while the captain fired away inside. The light has come to Basingstoke in the shape of two hallelujah lassies. Basingstoke core shows what God can do with two feeble women when only given up to his service. Basingstoke was startled. People felt their way of life and in many cases their livelihoods were under threat. Some were annoyed by the Sunday morning marches that disturbed the peace and quiet of their one day of rest. Some people didn't want preachers ramming religion down their throat at 10 o'clock on a Sunday morning. Even some of the churchgoers of the town were offended by our everyday language and our appropriation of popular music hall tunes for some of our hymns. Many were concerned that we wanted to shut all of the pubs and the breweries. Disturbances and harassment started almost immediately. At open air meetings, ruffians would try to take the flag. Indoor meetings were disrupted by men using foul language and talking and laughing through the service. By 1881, hostility and friction had grown so bad that almost every weekend a band of roughs would disrupt our open air work. Questions were raised in Parliament and the Home Secretary said that everything that could be done to prevent such disturbances would be done, but nothing changed. Nothing seems to have changed since in terms of questions in Parliament. A leaflet was circulated on the streets of the town urging roughs to mass again against the Salvation Army and so those opposing us became known as the Massaganians. The worst of the riots occurred on Sunday the 27th of March 1881. The Battle of Church Square led to the Riot Act being read and the Royal Artillery clearing the streets. The mayor issued a proclamation ordering us off the streets, but the Salvationists defied it. The violence continued. Homes of Salvationists and their supporters were damaged and rioting continued. Opposition continued until at least 1883, until the freedom of the streets became a fact. Now you all know this, don't you? So why am I telling you again? Well, it's because our early history is a colourful and compelling story. It connects us to God's story, first of all. The Salvation Army, the early Salvationists in Basingstoke, were proof that God loved this straggling, ill-built town with its 50 pubs and four breweries so much that he sent his one and only son, and that whoever believed in him would have eternal life. It connects us too with what Jesus called us to be and to do. We read about that in Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 to 20. When Jesus came to his disciples and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. We are called to go. We are called out ones, being sent to make disciples and to teach them to obey Jesus' way of life. Our early history embodies our core at its missional best. It's a story of the faithfulness of our founding Salvationists to remain true to God and the army in the face of such violent opposition. Now, such physical violent opposition may not be around today, but in the reading that we shared earlier from Ephesians chapter 6, Paul is absolutely clear that Basingstoke core is still opposed. The forces of evil that put Jesus on the cross are seriously upset by his resurrection victory. 
And so in verse 12 of our reading, Paul says, our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Basingstoke Core is still opposed. These forces remain panic-stricken that our gospel message challenges their power and authority. And so they seek to distract and to depress us, to blow us off course. Their attacks may no longer be full frontal as they were in our early days. We may feel that we're free to spread our message across the town. But more subtle opposition is still out there. The forces of evil love to persuade us to invest our time and our energy in irrelevant side issues or by tempting us with money, sex and power. That's how the church has been tempted across the years. And so that's why Paul encourages us in these verses from Ephesians chapter 6 to put on the full armour of God and to stand our ground. Now is not the time to retreat. Now, I'm sure you've heard many sermons on what the armour consists of. In fact, if you were here a few weeks ago for the YP Annual in Cafe Church, Gail preached on what the armour consists of and what that means for us today. And you can go home and have a look at Ephesians chapter 6 again and reflect on that later. But for this evening, I want you to notice what is not included in the armour of God. The full armour of God contains no protection for the soldier's back. The full armour of God contains no protection for the soldier's back. We are a people of war. The battle is before us. It is in front of us. And the Salvation Army does not call for retreat. What a pity it would be, what an insult to the early day comrades of Basingstoke Corps if we are ever guilty of being dressed up with nowhere to go. We must never put on the full armour of God, never put on our Salvation Army uniforms and then confine ourselves to our barracks, away from the conflict. We must never find ourselves endlessly preparing for the battle, praying and worshipping, playing and singing our music, studying God's word and strategizing our programs, but then be mysteriously absent when God's call to arms is sounded. We must never be so busy that we never actually go to war. Our armour Our shield, our sword, shouldn't be like new, never tested in the heat of battle. Our armour should be dented from the conflict that is out there in our world. There should be scorch marks on our shields from the devil's fiery darts. The telltale marks of conflict should be our testimony as it was for our forefathers. Salvation Army soldiers, and in view of this cause history, especially Basingstoke Salvation Army soldiers, should always be carrying out the work of a soldier. We must understand that the story that brought us into being as a missional force for God in this town is something that can help us in our conflict and spiritual warfare today. We must use the story of our early days as we have done over the last few years to give us purpose and strength in the 21st century. We must live by it and unify around it. We must draw on it and learn from our best days. We must continue to go into conflict with the enemy as our forefathers did, empowered by God, dressed in and protected by his armour, equipped with his weapons and determined to stand our ground against the opposition. If we do that, then God promises that not even the gates of hell will be able to stand against us as the Macedonians discovered. We are more than conquerors in Christ. That's got to be worth a hallelujah, I'd have thought.
We are more than conquerors in Christ. We carry the promise of victory. And so what God calls us to do is to do the work that we have been empowered and equipped to perform. We're going to sing a song together in response. It's something that we've used uh, in the musical, The Two Feeble Women, and a few weeks ago in our gala evening. And it reminds us that when we face that spiritual battle, wherever it is in our community, if it costs us dearly, then we won't turn back, whatever the cost. We're called, each of us is called, this call is called to live, to love and save the lost. His love cannot be finally frustrated by those powers and authorities that Paul spoke of. And so we cannot turn back. We cannot confine ourselves to barracks. We need to be out there fighting on God's behalf. I'm going to sing these songs together. If it is that you want to respond by coming to use this place of prayer this evening, then do that as we sing. If you want to pray on your own, then bring something in your hand. If you want somebody to pray with you, come empty-handed. But let's sing these three verses together. If cross is come, if it should cost me dearly, servant of my servant Lord if darkness falls around the path of duty and men despise the Saviour I've Deny the one that 
that I have followed, nor be ashamed to bear my master's name. I'll not turn back, whatever it may cost. I'm called to live to love and save. Heavenly Father, as we review this cause history, if we remind ourselves uh, of the courage and boldness of our forefathers, the people who laid the foundation for this core, we ask that although we may find ourselves in different circumstances in the 21st century, you will give us the same courage and the same boldness, not to confine ourselves to barracks, but to be out there fighting your war, fighting your fight, wherever that's needed, fighting the spiritual powers and authorities that are around us, armed with the full armor of God, determined never to turn back, determined never to retreat. We ask that if you ask us to go into battle this week, that you will help us to stand for you and to take our ground in the light and the witness of our forefathers and in the strength and power of your Holy Spirit. We ask that you will be with us wherever we find ourselves on the front line this week. And we ask this in your name. Amen. <laughs>